Now, in my amateur career, I went through a big slump for a long time, which consisted of shots just like that. Big, high, right shots. And no matter what I did, I could not fix that problem. And that was until my coach at the time gave me this specific feel, which is something we see vast majority of all the top players in the world do, which was the key for me to really fix that right shot and at the same time gain a bunch of power. It was one of the moves alongside with a few other areas that was instrumental for not only me breaking that plateau and getting out of the slump and becoming a scratch quite quickly afterwards, but pushing on further than that and becoming a professional. And what that feel was, that feel was curling the knuckles down in the downswing, or you can even think of it as revving a motorcycle. Now for me, that is absolutely instrumental with my game because I have always played with a slightly weaker lead hand grip to where I see one and a half knuckles on my lead hand. Always done it. So for me, I need to have my left wrist bowed or flexed throughout my golf swing, backswing and downswing. If it immediately either gets flat or slightly cupped, that's where that high right one can come from. And what I did, I would have a nicely flexed left wrist at the top. And then as I'm coming into the shop, I would lose that flexion and it would sometimes go into a little bit of extension. So for me, just trying to feel it there, absolutely. That's what we can see there. The minus number is more flexed and the plus number is more extended or cupped. So for me, absolute nightmare to be able to keep that ball flying straight and keep it a decent distance. So that's why it's really important to get your correct matchup. For me, having that weaker grip, I needed that left wrist to still be flexed in the downswing. But even though I had it nice and flexed and bowed at the top, absolutely, it wasn't staying there. So that's where that revving the motorbike feel really came in handy for me. So that, or you could feel, let's say, curling the knuckles down towards the ground and really quite extreme to start off with. And we can see, absolutely, straight away, I got a minus number there for at impact. That's what I want to see. So here I'm measuring it with the hack motion, which there is a link in the description to get your hands on one of these. And this is telling me exactly what my wrist angles are doing. If only I had this when I was working on this way over a decade ago. So. Absolutely, that revving down, really don't be afraid to over exaggerate it. Now, as we can see there, definitely good again. So make sure you've got the correct grip when you're doing this. You can get away with having this feeling with a standard grip, absolutely. If you've got a standard two and a half knuckle grip on that lead hand, then yes, your club face will get stronger, but it won't get too strong. But for a strong grip, don't do it. Because look, watch here. I'm going to have a stronger grip and I'm going to try this knuckle feeling. And you're going to see, one, how left that ball's going on my flight scope. But two, you're going to see here exactly it's not going to start straight into that net at all. There we go. I mean, I could have even missed the net there. I did it so much. And it was still hard for me to even get myself to do that there. We can see a plus number for, again, backswing and downswing, so that means extended. So that's where, of course, for a stronger grip, a lot of players are thinking, why can't I bow the wrist with my stronger grip? Because if you're gonna hit the ball to target, you've got to have it cupped. If you have too much flexion there, absolute nightmare. That club face will just get way, way too closed. You're not gonna be able to function. You're not Dustin Johnson, because you can only do it with Dustin Johnson's level of rotation. So guys, let's get into exactly how to work on this. So, couple good important things here to note, because we're gonna go through a really good progression to get this into your swing. So first and foremost, stretch out your forearm. A lot of people have some very inflexible forearms, but I'm not one of them, but you can still see, Back in the past, I struggled with doing this. So make sure this forearm is nice and stretched. So just pull down your hand there, to stretch out the top of your forearms. So if you've got tight forearms, you can have tight wrists. So that's a really good one. And just make sure you're loosening those wrists up a little bit, almost doing like the Miguel Jimenez type of move there. That will really help then just loosen up those forearms. So once you've got those forearms nice and loosened, I would always recommend doing some kind of more exaggerated half swings. So really making sure you're just going halfway back and then halfway through, really feeling you're revving that motorcycle and extreme it as much as you can to where if you're seeing the ball flight, the ball flight would generally be quite short, maybe left as well. You're exaggerating it that much. So as we can see there, absolutely, definitely 
as we see, minus five there on there. So definitely quite a bit flexed going into impact there. So that's where if you can really get that feeling and exaggerate it, so many amateur golfers, I mean, that one would have definitely gone left. Most amateur golfers will definitely, absolutely shy away from doing exaggerations. And as you can see from here, there's no launch monitor because I don't want to see where that ball's going when I'm doing an exaggeration. That's why hitting balls into the net is great. That is why I'd always like you to do it. But as I said, when you're doing exaggerations and you're hitting balls on the range, you are not gonna hit the ball where you want it to go. That's the point. You want to over-exaggerate it as much as you can. So once we've got enough of that, with just half swings going in there, can repeatably get that nice angle that I want, awesome. And then we can build it up a little bit from there, absolutely get that feeling a little bit more into a swing, but still exaggerate it with a longer backswing. Absolutely, we can repeat that same number. A really good thing to do alongside this is really feeling like your body's opening up and rotating. So here we go, another one, just slightly longer. Let's say three quarters of the way back. There we go again. Again, it's slightly degrading as we're continuing to do it, as I can still suffer from this fault every now and again. But here we go, let's do one more, slightly longer, and we'll get into a great drill for this. Definitely there, as you can see, the ball starting way left into the net. That's me exaggerating it quite nicely. If you're gonna get that exaggeration, but going straight as well, you'd need a ton of rotation to match it up, but it would still probably go very low, and it wouldn't really go that far. So that's where there is diminishing returns when it comes to doing this. If you do it extreme, you need a ton of speed to be able to do it, but you need to exaggerate it to feel it first. Let's get into a drill. So guys, this drill you're about to see here is not one that I did back in the day, but this is extremely beneficial for anyone who's still struggling to get that feeling of that revving the motorbike and the downswing. And that's just put your glove on, have a T just in the front side of your glove, just so you can see there. If I now flex my left wrist, you can see how this little gap just gets formed there. That's what we want. We wanna feel like we're creating a gap between the T and our glove. So if we can do that, and let's say we've done all the other bits, but we're still quite not getting it as flexed or bowed as we would like coming into the ball, we could have that extra little feeling and it's gonna help a ton. So that's where this gives you physical feedback. So from here, as you can see, I've not got the hack motion on, but I've done a bunch of reps with it. I know what the feeling is from having the feedback. And then absolutely, let's get this reps in with this drill. Definitely that feels even that little bit more extreme without trying quite as hard to extreme it. So that's where absolutely having a drill that really targets the area perfectly is exactly what you need. And if you're struggling, just like I used to, of having those high right shots, definitely exaggerated it there a little bit, this will help you a ton. So don't be afraid when you do this of the ball going left. Absolutely, that's what you want to see if you're very much exaggerating it. Matching up with rotation will help you a ton from there. But absolutely, for you to do this, shutting your brain off, you need to have the extreme feeling when you're practicing. So then when you feel the opposite the other way, it's way easier to hit the middle and that'll be where you'll be at on the golf course. Exaggeration is the key. So this is how I broke out of that slump back in my amateur days, which got me down to a scratch handicap and then getting lower than that to where I became a professional. If I didn't do this, who knows where I would have been with my golf. So absolutely have a good practice on it. So if you enjoyed this video, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction, just like this, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video.